Here's today's First Word Daily Devotion. On May the 3rd, we turn our attention today to the reading in Judges. Again, we are going to see the uh, the pattern of the Judges at verse 6. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight uh, of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. Now that's the pattern of the judges, but there's another pattern in Judges. I hope that we see this. Verse 10 shows us the pattern of Hesed, that is the pattern of the steadfast love of the Lord. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord saying, and so here's the Lord, what's he do? After they sin, they do what's evil, they return to the Lord and the Lord is there. He never moves, the people move. And that's a good uh, parable for us. He never leaves us. We oftentimes leave and forsake him. And so here we have uh, verse 12 through 28. I want you to see this. Here we have people who have a memory. There are some who still recall the mighty acts of God. And of course, they were never to forget the mighty acts of God. But in the overall consciousness of the people, it seems as if they mostly have forgotten the Lord, their God. And remember, this is a failure of the people of Israel not living out Deuteronomy 6.4. And specifically, not simply just loving the Lord with all their hearts, but it's also laying that to the next generation. And I wonder sometimes, as I'm a father of young children, my prayer is that I am passing down my faith to them. That I'm not passing down simply a form of faith, that is, we come to church, we read the Bible, but I am passing down a pattern of my faith. That is, they see my character. They see a daddy who will uh, pray with them, who will weep with them, who will laugh with them, who will uh, tell them when he's wrong, a daddy who will ask for their forgiveness, a daddy who shapes and molds the hearts of his children into the pattern of the Bible. And by the way, uh, some of you may say, well, we've not really spent a lot of time in the Proverbs. The Proverbs have definitely been through all of our readings. The Proverbs are really set in this pattern of Deuteronomy 6.4. Uh, a, a son's commendation, command to listen to the voice of his father. And so the pattern of the Proverbs is set in Deuteronomy 6.4, the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and teach this to your children. And so Judges here in verse 11, verses 12 through 28, there's a memory. And the memory of, there's a memory of the mighty acts of God in some, but it's not a collective memory of the people. Lord, help us if we as a collective people forget the mighty acts of God. And here we have in this difficult passage in Judges chapter 11, and it is difficult because it's hard we have Jephthah's rash vow where he sacrifices his daughter. The Lord delivered him and he made a rash vow. And as a result, his daughter uh, lost her life. And again, remember, this is not good. This is not good what happened to Jephthah's daughter. And here we have him bargaining with God when he should have been trusting in God. And that's a wonderful pattern for us. There's no bargaining with God. His word stands forever. Instead, what we should do is simply just trust in the Lord, as the proverb says, with all of our heart. Now let's turn by John chapter nine. What a beautiful passage in John nine, where we see our Lord healing a man blind from birth. And so here we have this wonderful passage where Jesus comes to this man and he passed by and he saw a man blind from birth. Isn't that interesting? Jesus saw the man, the man could not see him. And so he goes and he heals him by making mud and putting it on his eyes. And there again, we're supposed to remember the pattern of the Bible. Remember how God fashioned man? He did so out of the dust of the ground. And here is this faithful God indeed, remaking the whole man here as he gives him sight. And of course, 
uh, he identifies himself. Uh, let's look at verse 25. He answered, whether he's a sinner, I don't know. But one thing that I do know, I once was blind, but now I see. And this man's testimony is the testimony of all the redeemed. We couldn't see until the Lord caused us to see. Now, I want you to see this. In chapter 8, the text of Jesus in John 8 focuses us on hearing. And then chapter 9 focuses on seeing. And then chapter 10, we're going to focus on hearing the voice of the shepherd. And so let's see this again in Psalm 112. We have another little note here, a footnote, a footnote 5. This psalm is an acrostic poem, each line beginning with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So this was laid out on purpose. Look at the way it begins, just like Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. But this is the focus of this psalm. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Now, in light of verse, uh, in li I should say, in light, that's sort of punny, isn't it? In light of John 9, look at Psalm 112 and verse 4. Light dawns in the darkness. For the upright, he is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. Verse 9, he has distributed freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. Now pay attention to this verse. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. We have this good news of this Lord who causes blinded eyes to see. And as indeed, as John tells us, in him was life and that life was the light of men. And through his light, we see all things.